Moving to Zendesk, the perfect project plan for switching to Zendesk from another software. The reason why I created this document or this book for that matter is because I screwed up in the past. I did not have this project plan available when a large client asked for it. I had it in my head. I had it as a project plan in my project management tool, but I did not have it as a comprehensive book that I could share and say, here, Mr. Client, this is what you're looking for, is it not? So I wanted to share with you what I've learned in a decade of experience of working as a Zenas consultant. Actually, this is my 11th year. I'm sure you already have an idea on what you need. And this document is only meant to complement that because moving softwares is hard. This book will help you transition from any kind of software to Zend. Myself and my team, we're a Zendus premier partner and we want to bring value into the sphere. The book is long, but it will give you an idea on what to prepare when you move to Zendus. This is going to be completely free. You can find it in the description of this video. So let's go. Topic number one is business. Why do you need Zendus? This is the number one question you have to ask yourself. You have to answer this question truthfully because Zenesk is a very powerful tool. The reason you'd want to move to Zenesk is because you want to offer customer service, quality customer service. It gives you a lot of autonomy when you work with it and you can use it without too much maintenance, which is a very big win. Once you have your channels plugged in, like email, chat, social media, telephone, etc., your agents can see tickets and they can work those tickets and you connect your different system to Zenesk. It just works. You don't have to do much else. Product sell itself you don't have to do too much to it i'm not going to try to convince you to use zenas this video is meant for somebody who's already kind of leaning that way on the flip side you can use a different software which is much cheaper much more affordable there's a plethora of options in this regard cheaper options usually mean you have to do more maintenance why because you have a ticketing system that is connected to a chat system that is connected to a reporting system that is connected to an ai triaging and connected somehow to your back end so you have to do a lot of work to maintain this cohesion of these tools to keep them working together it's almost like a plumber always having to stitch and uh, glue together a balloon that is spilling water so Zenus takes away a lot of this stitching together because it has a bunch of functionality omni-channel which you can just plug and play now I understand you maybe do have the time available to do that maintenance and you're fine with it that's okay in my view stitching together different systems to make them work because they're cheaper is a nightmare and it only slows you down but that's just my opinion if you're a small team i get it you have time available and it's okay you can make it work and it's fine now going back to the software you have to understand the fundamentals of how it works zendesk has been created on the foundation to solve customer service issues with off-the-shelf customer experience best practices built into the system the platform in itself set out to solve customer service issues now over the years zendesk has added sales capabilities to it like proactive messages like widgets that can chat with the customer bots that can also help serve service and also payment gateways within a widget customers can pay directly within a widget so it has added the ability for you to sell as well if you as a business want to focus on selling more there's a lot of options like Salesforce HubSpot intercom these tools have been built out to help you sell more now over the years these have added customers service capabilities on top of their functionality why because customers don't always just say hey i want to buy more they also ask like how can i turn it on how can i turn it off where's my invoice etc so once you understand these foundations you can make a more informed decision you can also offer something very niche specific like gorgeous gorgeous is a customer service platform built especially for shopify now if you've already made up your mind about the software that you want to use and the fundamentals that you are applying to buy the software then this makes this document even more valuable to you. The next point is going to be technology. When I say technology, I mean four things. One is going to be the Zenus onboarding. So you onboard into Zenus, make sure you use it correctly. Next one is going to be data migration to migrate historical data into Zenus to have context for your agents. Zenus system integrations with other platforms that you use to have a 360 view of your customers. And Zenus training to make sure that your agents know what they're doing. Let's talk about a data migration first to Zenus. This is importing historical data from your old system into Zenit. You need historical data for a few reasons. One is going to be to offer historical context to your agents on how to solve tickets. Another is going to be trends about how things went in the past. Zenith system integration. What I'm thinking about here 
is integrating with the backend where you keep your client data. This gives context to your agents to solve requests faster. Seeing your client data is important, like how long they've been a client, when they made the last purchase, what is the last purchase, what is their address, etc. By the way, I made a video about how to migrate historical data into Zendesk and I want to link it up top. Next topic in technology is going to be the Zendesk onboarding. I cover this a lot on this channel about how to do it. There's even a playlist dedicated to onboarding Zendesk. It's a bit outdated in terms of the UI of the platform, but the principles are the same. To be fair, most of our business as Zendesk Premier Partners is dedicated to onboarding companies into Zendesk. I cover the basics of what to keep in mind when you onboard Zendesk in this document as well, but I have to mention that there's an extended understanding needed here as well. Training your agents. You obviously have to make sure that your agents are well trained to work in Zendesk to make sure that they offer the best customer experience for your customers so they come back to buy more from you. There's plenty of videos out there to train your agents. You can also employ somebody to come in and do it. I suggest that you start out from Zendesk training. It's training.zendesk.com and you have foundational support there and it's a two hour video I think and it's sufficient for your agents to start understanding how to use the platform. On top of it, you can hire somebody to come in to do either a Zoom or on-premise to make sure that they understand what they do. However, on top of this, you need Zendesk champions. This applies to large teams. So if you have 100 plus agents, then you're going to need somebody to maintain Zendesk. I call them Zendesk champions, and there's three of them. Number one is consultant type. This is somebody who is a people person, who talks to people, understands the business, and can transform workflows into Zendesk features. Second is going to be the developer type. This is somebody who understands programming and plays around with the API a lot. This this is the person that's going to maintain the connections from Zendesk to your other platforms and from your other platforms to Zendesk. Technology evolves and so does business climate. So you need to update constantly in order to keep up and improve yourself. That's why you need this person dedicated to this role. The third Zendesk champion is going to be the content moderator. A content moderator is somebody who documents processes from your business. Now, if you sell services, they document how those services work. If you sell products, then it's a person that documents how those products work. The fundamentals of this is you need a knowledge base to encourage self-service. Self-service helps you save a lot of time and money. Customers can Google whatever problem they have with your brand, they find it on Google, they read it, and they don't send a ticket. On top of this, the knowledge base that is created by your content moderator can be used by an AI. The AI can match requests from what the customer wants with an article of knowledge base and just provide the answer directly to the customer like in a conversation. Now that you have your Zendesk champions, the next point is going to be user testing. I've enclosed in this document a methodology on how you can do testing, as well as a checklist for you to use to make sure that everything is working correctly. Now before going live, you have to make sure the system does everything it's supposed to. So that's why you can use this user testing methodology I shared in this book. I've also included a change management component because I know in large teams you need to have approvals, you need to have testing, and people to sign off on how things work. I'm sure there's a gazillion other things that I didn't mention in this video, but I tried to keep it short on what is covered in this document. It's, I think, 60 something pages long. It's free and you can use it to be relaxed when transitioning to Zendesk. It's meant to decrease the headache and the anxiety from moving from a system to Zendesk. If you like this content and if you like the document, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'd be really grateful and I will see you in the next one. Bye.